Hi folks, welcome to this video on mandatory conversion when you have a convertible bond. In this case, remember that when we have a mandatory conversion, that means that it must be at the issuer's option. So if at any point in time you see that a conversion is mandatory, that means that the issuer of the bond is going to force you at or before a retirement to convert the bond into shares. So you can't force the issuer to pay you the lump sum uh, face value of the bond at the end of the term or at retirement. So um, in this case, we have um, Wilson Products Limited at the beginning of X1 decided to issue a bond which was convertible uh, when the market rate was 6%. The bonds are $10 million in face value. The coupon is 5%. They're due in 15 years with semi-annual interest payments each uh, June 30th and December 31st. It says the bonds were issued at 104, which means the investors gave 4% over and above the par value. Um, the bonds here are mandatorily convertible at the company's discretion into common shares. And it told you that each $100 bond would be given 20 common shares upon conversion. But the company may, at its discretion, repay the bond uh, for cash in lieu of shares. So again, that means you cannot force the company to give you the cash instead of shares. It's up to the company. It's at their discretion. So we consider this to be mandatory conversion. Now, because of the fact that it's mandatory, meaning that the company or it's at the issuer's option, that means that when we're calculating the present value of the uh, financial instrument here, the convertible bond, we do not calculate the present value of the future uh, lump sum payment because you can't force the issuer to make that lump sum, lump sum uh, payment. Mandatory, in fact, conversion is mandatory here, which means that the issuer can get you to convert or to exchange or convert, I should say, your bonds into shares. So how can we figure out what the journal entry is at the date that we issue this um, uh, convertible bond? Well, we're going to take the original issue price of the bond because we have to figure out how much cash that the issuer is going to give us. The issuer is going to, or the investor is going to give us, the investor is going to give us 10400000 because it's 4% over and above the face value. Now, when we're calculating the liability of the, the bond payable or the bond liability, we're not calculating the present value of the face value of the bond. Why? Because um, the, invest, the issuer does not have to pay you back the face value. It's mandatory conversion. They can just give you shares. So because it's at the issuer's option, we only calculate the interest liability on the bond for the liability piece. So when we put it into our compute PV, which we would do in our calculators, we would put in a face or a, fair, a future value of zero because the, they don't have to pay back the lump sum, but they do have to make the steady stream interest payment, which is $250,000 on a $10 million bond. And we've done that calculation up here. Notice again, we use the coupon rate, which is 5%, not the market rate. And because it's a semi-annual bond, we multiply by a half to get the payment. We use the market rate in our present value calculation, and we're making 30 interest payments. 30 payments because the bond's a 15-year bond, and we make two payments a year. When we do a compute PV, we get the present value of the uh, interest payments only to be 4.9110. So now the equity component is a residual, the difference between what we got from the investors and the present value of the interest payments that we got to pay back. And that's 5,499,890. So our journal entry here is to debit the cash that we get as the issuer to credit the present value of the interest liability on the bond and then to credit the share equity account, which is share equity on the bond for the difference. Now, the question also asked you to calculate interest expense for the entire first year. Well, don't forget, you're going to have to calculate interest expense for the entire, uh, for each six month period. So I did this by taking the uh, present value of the interest payments, 
and multiplying it by 3% because remember when we calculate interest expense we're calculating it using the market rate so now um, we would calculate the interest expense for each six month period well for the first six months the present value of the liability to open the first six month period which is at January 1st X1 is 4.9 million 110 we calculated that just up here right so we know the interest expense on that uh, part of the liability is one hundred and forty seven thousand three dollars now don't forget whenever we book interest expense we book an interest liability so your liability now has gone up by this much so to calculate the interest expense for the second six month period we're going to increase our interest liability by 147.003 but we reduce the interest liability by pay making our $250,000 coupon payment all right um, um, at the end of the period so now what we would have is multiplying that all by 3% we would get 143,913 and that would give us the total for the entire year which are the, is the total of the two six month periods 290,916 so now if you find using a formula a little bit um, you know uncomfortable for you you can also use a table and set it up the way they have in the in the uh, course content and the way we did in class so in order to calculate the interest expense so this is the column that we want to calculate right here the interest expense column you can look at the opening value of the liability that's at January 1st um, or sorry for the first uh, amount of the uh, liability for the first six months which was 4.9 million 110 that was the present value of the interest payments and calculate interest expense at 3% so this would be at 3% okay oh, let me see if I can bring this back here I can I'll just move this line over to separate the columns so this number here times your three percent which is your semi-annual market rate is one gives you 147 and three dollars when you multiply three percent by the opening liability now that liability gets decreased by the amount of interest paid so this opening liability plus the increase in the liability the interest liability that happens when you book the interest expense less the interest payment which reduces your interest payable will give you an ending liability balance of this and again we've done the calculation down here for you so if that's my opening liability for the second six month period which begins July 1st X1 then I'm going to calculate 3% of that liability to figure out my interest expense for the second six month period in the first year and that liability will now get reduced by the amount of the interest payment that I make to the investors and that gives me this amount here now you didn't need to calculate this this last second uh, ending balance in the interest liability account we didn't ask for that but this is just another way that you can calculate the interest expense for each six month period and add it up as opposed to doing it the way we did up here the choice is yours now the question didn't ask for this but since we've got a table we could go as far as calculating or making the journal entries using the table so that's what I've done down here I've actually tried to I don't know if I can reduce this enough so that you can still see it but I've used this table here to actually do my journal entries for the first six months and the second six months and you can see here that whenever I book interest expense which is in the first six months I'm also increasing my interest liability and I'm reducing my interest liability in the first six months when I make my cash interest payment so this should give you an idea as to how we calculate this ending liability balance here it's your initial liability plus the increase in the li interest liability when you book interest expense and the reduction in the liability when you make an interest payment we've done the exact same thing here for the second six month period we took the interest expense that we calculated up here for the second six month period and credited our interest payable for that amount and then we reduced our interest liability or the interest payable by two hundred and fifty thousand because we were making that payment to the investor okay so again doing the entry sometimes if you know the opening value and the amount by which your um, liability is changing right that'll give an idea as to how to calculate the ending liability even though it wasn't required for our question okay so this concludes our demonstration on mandatory conversion